fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver, let's go big fellow. I am Silver. The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, had ridden southward for several days. They were on the trail outside of Stockton on the fourth day as the sun began to set. Almost sunset, Toto. We'll have to find a suitable campsite for the night. Ah, we come long way trailing Sid Carey and his gang. Yes, I know. Sooner or later, we'll catch up to them, I hope. Carey's a menace to the territory. I won't give up until he's turned over to the law. You think him know we from him? I don't know. Sid Carey is a very clever crook, Tonto. If him only two in gang now, seem like. Yes, the trail they've left proves that. Some of his gang were taken when the sheriff of Pecos closed in on them a month ago. But even with only two, Carey has caused a great deal of trouble. Oh, that right. You know what Carey looked like, Kimasabi? No, Tonto, I don't. What's more, I don't know anyone who could identify him. He's a very clever man, as I said before. There's a good place to camp over to the left. Let's head for it. One silver. Come up, Scott. That night after supper, the Lone Ranger disguised himself as a cowpoke. Then he and Toto rode to town and entered the Stockton Cafe. They saw a vacant table at the rear and headed for it. They were just about to be seated when a nice-looking man dressed as a rancher approached. The place is fairly crowded, Toto. Oh, that's right. We're lucky we get table. Well, I beg your pardon. I guess you all got here ahead of me. I was trying to beat you to this table, but the crowd got in my way, sort of. There's an extra chair if you want to join us, mister. <laughs> don't mind if I do, sir. I had a hard day of riding, so I don't feel much like standing. Then you don't live near Stockton? Well, that's right, I don't, mister. Come from way down yonder near the San Anton. That's quite a distance from here. <laughs> That's exactly right, mister. It sure is. Nice country down that way, though. Mighty nice. By the way, you can call me Tex if you like. All right, Tex. Now, what might I call you, sir? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter if you call me Smith. Smith, eh? Easy name to recollect, anyhow. Yes, it is. You from around here, Smith? I'm staying outside of town. I don't know how long I'll be there. <laughs> sort of got itchy feet, huh? Lots of you cowpokes are like that. Never satisfied in one place, seems like. Yes, I guess that's right. 
Isn't it kind of strange for you to be hanging out with an Indian? <laughs> well, not that I don't think he's all right, you understand. He's my friend, and a good one. We friends, long time. Well, I hope I didn't offend you. I was just being curious, that's all. Can I buy you each some refreshments? Uh, we're going to have coffee. You have what you want, Tex. Well, now, that's fair enough. Hey, waiter. Yeah? Give my friends here some coffee. As for me, I reckon I'll have a little bit of a drink. And hurry it up. Sure will, mister. Have it for you in a jiffy. You know, Smith, it's nice to meet up with folks so friendly-like. Some folks out this here way are too ready to be downright unfriendly at times. I suppose you do run into people like that now and then. Yep, you sure do. I'm a peaceful sort of hombre myself. Except, of course, when I get sort of riled up. <laughs> when that happens, folks just better leave me alone. <laughs> At least you know your shortcomings, Dick. Well, everybody's got his faults, I reckon. There you are. Thanks, waiter. Yeah, there you are. Keep the change. Well, thanks, mister. Thanks a lot. You're quite generous with your tips, Tex. Well, easy come, easy go. Money's mighty handy when you need it, but I don't aim to let it stick to my hands and get in the way. That's one way to look at it. Perhaps the best way if one wants to be happy and carefree. Mm, that's right. But I've met a good many out here in the West who put money before everything else. They'll do most anything to get it. Don't you meet people like that, Tex? Well, I know I do. More often than I like, Smith. <laughs> but then I reckon we can't expect everybody to have easy-going dispositions like we have. <laughs> That's right. Say, you know, I kind of like you, Smith. You're the type of hombre who can get along right well with anybody, seems like. Thanks, Tex. Yeah, and I can see why you took a fancy of the Indian, too. I declare he's the first Indian I've come across that can smile without looking up at my scalp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me not scalp people. Me busy keep on scalp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen to that, will you? Even has a sense of humor. Tano, you're all right, far as I'm concerned. Mm, thanks. <sighs> well, Smith, I-, I hope we meet again sometime. It's right enjoyable sitting here and talking to you all. We've enjoyed your company, Tex. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I'll be moseying along now. Good luck to you, Smith. Adios. 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 Oh, him nice fellow, Kim Sammy. He's very friendly, Tonto. All right, let's get back to camp. Uh-huh. <laughs> that must be Tex riding away. Ah. Uh-huh. right out of town to south. So I notice. I took it for granted that anyone riding through from so far away as San Antonio... Be stopping at the local hotel for the night. You say, must have a hard day, right? Yes, I know. Well, here are the horses. <laughs> Big fella. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. A short time later, the man known as Tex reined to a halt and dismounted in front of a cabin in the foothills to the south. Oh, oh, there, boy. Oh, oh. Anything interesting in Stockton? Find out anything about the army you spoke about before you left? <laughs> Boys, when Sid Carey sets out to do a thing, he does it. You ought to know there by now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Walt, you and Mark should have been with me tonight. Why? What happened? What'd you do, Sid? I not only spotted the hombres I suspected was trailing this, but I sat at the same table with them and treated them to coffee. What? <laughs> we became real friendly like, too. Well, I'll be <laughs> doggone. You sure are a card, Sid. No wonder they didn't get wise to you. Oh, they were friendly as all get out. Fact is, I got to like them right well just from talking to them. Now, wait a minute, Sid. If you're going to be friendly with those two, where does that leave us? <laughs> oh, don't you worry, none, Walt. I know that masked man would turn on me in a minute if he found out I was Sid Carey, the outlaw they'd been trailing. What? You mean he was masked there in the cafe? Nope, he's plenty smart. He was disguised. Looked like a real cowpoke. But you see, I was wise enough to watch for that Indian. He was along. It's dangerous fooling with those two, Sid. Well, I sort of like matching wits with them. (laughs) Mr. Smith is right entertaining and friendly when he isn't being a lawman. But if you get to like him, no telling what you'd do if they started closing in on us. Look, Mark, the fact that I can act friendly when I want to is the reason we've been able to pull so many jobs. Like when I became friends with that bank in New Mexico. You remember? Yeah. It was your bullet that plugged him when we robbed his bank. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I was a mourner at the burial while the posse was out hunting the gang. 
No one suspects the friendly, easy-going Tex of being Sid Carey, the outlaw. Now, nah, don't worry none about that masked man and Indian. When the time comes, I'll take care of them. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tottle had arrived at their camp in the hills to the north of Stockton. As they rolled up in their blankets for the night, Tonto spoke. Tex seem happy sort of fella, Kimasabi. Yes. But I noticed something you seem to have missed, Tonto. What that? He called you by name. Though he hadn't heard either one of us mention it. Not right. I'm not think of it at time. I'd like to know him better, Tonto. Struck me that he made friends too easily. You think him have reason, maybe? Could be. Well, we get some sleep now. In the morning, we'll see if we can find out more about Tex. The following morning, the Lone Ranger, though still wearing his disguise, put on his mask. Then he and Tonto left camp and set out along the trail toward town. I'll leave you at the edge of town, Tonto. You can go in and get some supplies... Then come back to the camp and wait. Mm-hmm. What you do, Kimasari? I'll bypass the town and try to pick up the trail left by Tex last night. I'm curious to know where he went. Oh, me wonder, too. I'll join you at the camp as soon as I find out. May turn out that he's what he says he is. But as long as I'm suspicious of him, I won't be satisfied until I know. Well, me get supplies, then wait at camp. Good enough. Come on, Silver. Get him up to town. <laughs> Leaving Tonto at the edge of town, the Lone Ranger circled around Stockton until he reached the south trail beyond the town. He picked up Tex's tracks and followed them for some distance. As he rounded a bend in the trail in the foothills, he pulled to a sudden halt when a bullet whined close to his head. Back here behind this boulder. Got you covered, masked man. There's another hombre waiting behind another boulder just ahead. You better reach and be quick. The Lone Ranger realized that he was a perfect target for either man, so he decided to play safe and raise his hands. All right, I'm reaching. Come on, boy. Get him. Get him. Oh, oh, there. One move, mister, and I'll plug you. What's more, my friend has still got you covered from that boulder in front of you. What do you want? Since you came up here snooping, I decided you better find out all there is for you to know. Hey, Mark, come on out here. Get up. Come on. Oh, oh, there. We sure got him dead to rights, Walt. What are we going to do now? Plug him? No, not yet. Sid will want to talk to him, I reckon. So you're the man who are with Sid Carey, huh? That's right, we are. And we know you've been trailing us, too. Are you going to come along peaceful-like? Or do we have to give you a bit of lead to make you do as we want? I might as well go along and meet Carey if... That's what you want? Drop your guns to the ground, and don't try anything or one of us will plug you. You can't draw against us with both in front and one behind you. Now drop them. Once more, the Lone Ranger hesitated. For a moment, he was tempted to fight his way out of the situation. Then, deciding against it, he unholstered his guns and dropped them to the ground. There. Watch him close, Mark, while I get those guns. Yeah. I got him. Get it up. All right, mister. Get going straight ahead along that narrow trail. You're going to meet Sid Carey. You'll be mighty sorry you did. Come on. Come on, Silver. Get up there. Get up. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. While following the trail left by the man he knew as Tex, the Lone Ranger was trapped by Walt and Mark, the two outlaws who were with Sid Carey. After disarming the Lone Ranger, the outlaws took him to the cabin where Sid Carey was hiding out. Come on, you. You brought a friend of yours, Sid. Well, well. I didn't count on this pleasure so soon. So you caught the mask man, huh? So you're Sid Carey. I reckon I am, mister. That voice is familiar. Suppose I just take off that mask and have a look at your face. Satisfied? Mr. Smith. Well, what do you know? <laughs> I guess you didn't connect the friendly text with Sid Carey, did you, mister? As a matter of fact, I did. That's why I trailed you. Hmm, he's smarter than I thought. Maybe I don't so. Know. Good thing Tonto didn't come along. Both of you would have been too much for Walt and Mark to handle at once. Here's your mask. If you want to keep it as a souvenir. So that's what it looks like. No, it isn't, Walt. He's got himself fixed up to fool folks when he goes without the mask. You can put it on again if you feel more natural with it on, Smith. Or I should say, Mr. Lone Ranger. Thanks. Now that you've got me here, what do you intend to do? <laughs> Why, we can have a nice friendly visit like we had last night at the cafe. Nothing like old friends getting together often, I say. You can drop that friend business, Carrie. That suits me fine. Time up, boys, while I hold my gun on him. Right sure, away, boys. Before we leave here, we'll put a bullet in him. But that can wait. I'd sort of like to have him around to talk to now and then. Now get busy. While Sil Sid held a gun, Walt and Mark tied the Lone Ranger securely and placed him on one of the bunks. The Lone Ranger's own guns had been left on a table in the middle of the cabin. Then the three outlaws sat down to plan a job. Yeah, sit down, boys. Sure. What do you got in your mind, Sid? I found out the stage comes in this morning just before noon carrying some gold for the bank. We'll get that gold. Gonna finish off the masked man before we start out? I was going to, but I've changed my mind. Comes to me that we might be able to get some cash for that Lone Ranger. The law won't pay any ransom, Sid. I know that. But I know an outlaw whose gang got broke up by the masked man. That outlaw will give plenty to get his hands on the Lone Ranger so he can trade him for horses to the Apaches. They'll give him a working over and torture him before they do away with him. <laughs> can be fixed so we can be there to watch, too. What about the Indian? He might come hunting the masked man. I figure he won't miss him till late in the day. Uh, we don't have to worry about him. <laughs> and we'll gag that masked man before we leave just in case anyone comes within calling distance of the cabin. Help me put a gag on him, Walt. Yeah. And we'll go hold up the stage. The Lone Ranger lay on the bunk and waited until the three outlaws had left. They had used cords to secure his ankles and to tie his wrists behind his back. Also, he noticed they had locked the door from the outside as they went out. He managed to sit up, then stand. He saw his guns on the table and knew that Silver was outside. Still bound and gagged, the Lone Ranger hopped to the window. Outside the cabin, Silver had been tied to a tree around to the side. The great stallion was ever on the alert and continually looked one way and the other as he waited for his master to return. Yet Silver, because of his long association and training with the Lone Ranger, sensed that something was wrong. He had seen the others leave the cabin, and he looked expectantly at the building, hoping to see the Lone Ranger. Suddenly he stared at the window, his ears pointed forward as he saw his master inside. <laughs> for a moment, Silver stood still. Then he saw the masked man nodding his head, beckoning. The intelligent horse saw the white cloth that covered his master's mouth and knew that something was decidedly wrong. Silver reared and plunged in an effort to break the reins that held him to the tree. <laughs> Finally, the bridle broke loose and Silver was free. With a whinny of triumph, he trotted over to the window. For a moment, he reached in through the window and nuzzled the Lone Ranger's shoulder. Then, as the masked man hopped away into the center of the cabin, Silver whinnied again. <laughs> Silver had seen his master bound up several times in the past, and he knew what he must do, get to him and help release him. He left the window and trotted around to the door. For a moment, Silver stood outside the door. Then, swinging around, he lashed out with his hind feet. Turning his back, the Lone Ranger raised his bound wrist towards Silver's mouth. 
The great stallion first brushed his lips over the cords, then set to work with his teeth. Gradually, the knots loosened, until by working his wrists up and down, one of the Lone Ranger's hands slipped out. He immediately reached up to release the gag from his mouth. There. Glad to be rid of that gag. Good work, big fella. Now I'll untie the cords on my ankles. There. That's got it. Once more, the masked rider of the plains was free. He took his guns from the table. All right, come on, fella. Then let Silver outside. After retrieving Silver's bridle and putting it on him, the Lone Ranger stood for a moment with his hand resting fondly on Silver's neck. First we'll go for Tortado. Then Sid Carey and his men will be in for a surprise. He's a big fella. Come on, Silver! Riding hard, the Lone Ranger soon arrived at the camp where Tonto was waiting. Oh, sir. oh easy, steady, big fella. Hurry. You're right, plenty fast. You find a fella named Tex? Yes, he's really Sid Carey. I'll tell you what happened later. Guest scout and come on. And where we go? First, we'll ride to the edge of town, and I'll give you a message for the sheriff. Then we'll head along the trail to meet the stage. All right, let's get started. Uh -huh. Scout ready to leave. Good enough, steady, big fella. Easy, fella. Come on, Hill there. Come on, scout. Reaching the edge of town, the Lone Ranger waited while Tonto rode in and stopped in front of the sheriff's office. Oh, Scott, open that. Easy, Scott. Hey, what do you want, Indian? You get posse. Go meet stage. Outlaws plan hold up. How do you know that? How do I know you're telling the truth? Men who send me say, give this to sheriff. Huh. A bullet. Say, that's a silver bullet. Isn't that right? I know who sent that, all right. I'll get a posse together right away, Indian. You hurry. Outlaws, Sid Carey and gang. Sid Carey? Great day. That's one hombre I'd like to catch. Hey, Jake. Hey, quick. Get a posse together right away. Sid Carey and his two men waited along the trail in an arroyo for the stagecoach to make an appearance. wonder how much longer we got to wait, Sid. Well, the stage is due most any minute now, Walt. Don't you all be impatient. Hey, look, I see a cloud of dust coming up the trail right now. Must be the stage. Yeah, it must be. Mount your horses, boys. Well, it's <laughs> yep, it's a stage, all right. All right, get your guns handy. Squad shooting. Come on. Get it up there. Get, get up. up. This will be easy. Hey, those shots. Look, coming along the trail behind the stage. Two armories there. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, don't let them stop us. Hey, Sid. It's a masked man and the Indian. Low Ranger, but it can't be. I'm leaving right now. I'm cutting over the prairie. Get up. Me too. Get along there. I'd better ride the left and head away from here. Get up. Come on, get up there. Come on there. Get going. Get up. Come on, Sid. Upon hearing the famous cry of the masked man, Sid Carey turned and looked back. He saw the Lone Ranger swerve off the trail in pursuit, and he also saw a group of horsemen closing in on Walt and Mark. Oh, he's thrown into a trap somehow. Can't figure how that masked man got loose. I'll throw lead his way. In spite of the bullets fired his way, the Lone Ranger continued to follow. The magnificent stallion Silver never wavered, even in the face of the gunfire, and increased his speed as his master urged him on. Come on, big fella. Faster, Silver. Faster. I gotta stop him. I gotta. Oh, my gun's empty. Gotta outrun him. Get up there. Come on, get up there. Take it away, Carrie. Once again, the outlaw looked back. His easygoing manner had deserted him, and in its place was a strained, worried look as he saw the Lone Ranger take his lariat in hand and begin to whirl it. He's gonna rope me. Get up there. Come on, get up. Digging his spurs into his horse's flanks, Sid Carey tried once more to put more distance between himself and the man whom he had left tied in the cabin. But with a lariat whirling over his head, the Lone Ranger moved closer and closer until finally he threw the rope with a snap. And as the great horse Silver dug in with his hind feet and braced himself, the rope settled over Carrie's shoulders, and he was dragged from the saddle. Oh. Easy, Silver. Easy now. All right, mister. You got me. I'll give up. Get up. Hey, hold on. What are you aiming to do? I'm not going to use a gun on you as you would me. I'm going to give you the beating you deserve. I'll show you if that's what you want. That's what I want, and this is what you get. I'll fix you for that. Dang it. Not so good at fixing, are you? Try this. And this. Get to your feet. Now, wait. Wait, wait. Uh, I had enough. We could have been friends if you'd been willing to talk things over. Friends? You don't know what the word means except to use it to further your own rotten schemes. Oh, 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 oh. Steady, boy. Steady there. You all right, Kimosabe? Yes, Toto. We got the other two, mister. Was that all of them? Yes, three altogether. 
Uh, what's left of the Carey gang? This man here is Sid Carey. That's Carey. You mean that sorry-looking critter is Sid Carey, the tough outlaw leader? That's right. <laughs> Maybe he used to be tough, but it looks like you softened him up a bit, eh, boys? <laughs> he and those other two are wanted in many places north of here. I'm sure you'll find murder charges against them. Uh, the Indian was telling me how friendly Carey was to you last night in the cafe. Yes. You might say he's a friendly enemy who lulls his intended victims with his easy manner and friendly talk. This time he slipped up. Uh, look, mister, I don't know how you got loose from that cabin, but... Well, I... ask my horse. Maybe he'll tell you. Huh, Silver? <laughs> from the way that stallion's looking, you'd think he really knew and was about to tell. Carey met his match between that horse and you, my friend. We failed him all week from Pecos. He himself gave us a chance to get him. Mm, that's right. Well, maybe we go now, Kimasabi. Met Sheriff and men take outlaws. Huh? Yeah, we can handle them. Good. All right, let's go, Tello. Easy, Easy big fellow. Easy, fella. Adios, Sheriff. Goodbye, mister. Adios, Tex. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Remember what you told us, Tex, that we can't expect everybody to have easygoing dispositions like we have. But then, that was an hombre named Tex who said that, wasn't it? <laughs> Not Sid Carey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you'll never play Tex again. He ain't feeling so friendly right about now. Adios. Be seeing you again. Come on, Phil. Come on, Phil. Carey, if you really had wanted a friend, you couldn't have picked a better hombre than him. But you made a mistake when you made an enemy of the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs> <laughs>